All right, so we've talked a lot about the different types of grass haze, okay? Nutritional profile differences between grass haze and alfalfa. We've talked about seed head differences, Timothy and, and orchard. But one of the things we haven't talked about is just looking at the hay real closely by itself. Hay is a product of mother nature, okay? And mother nature certainly is very variable from year to year with the amount of moisture, the amount of sun, the amount of wind. So it's extremely natural for there to be variations in hay in color, in smell, in, in, in how it looks, in the size of the leaves. All of those variations are very, very natural. No different than if you go out and look at the hay or the grass that's growing in your area or the plant material. It changes based on the inputs that are going into it as provided by mother nature. So what do some of those inputs mean and what do some of those variations mean? Because these are questions that we get and, and consumers who want to know and are concerned about. So one of the more common questions we get is people who talk about brown in their hay. And you can see right here are a couple of good examples. And, and that's really what we call brown leaf. The difference is primarily the color in the leaf. And it can be all shades. We like this nice bright green, but sometimes we'll see a little bit of a yellow. Sometimes we'll see a little bit of a brown. The first thing to let you know is that from a nutritional standpoint, there is no difference between a nice soft green leaf and a brown leaf. The fiber content is the same. The protein content is the same. There's no different from a nutritional standpoint. The difference is basically in the look and in the color, and that's affected by how much light is getting to the hay. Nice green hay like this is typically at the top of the grass so that there's a good chlorophyll content and the light is getting to it. Whereas brown leaf is the lower leaves on the plant material. It's the lower leaves on the plant stock where maybe there's not as much light getting there. But at the end of the day, it doesn't affect palatability. It doesn't affect the nutritional profile. And you know, funny enough, I've had owners call me and say, hey, my animal loves the brown hay. Can you make me just a package of brown hay? Well, unfortunately I can't do that. But what I can do is assure you that the brown leaf that you will commonly see in hay is not a problem. It's not gonna decrease the quality of the hay. It's not gonna affect your animal from a palatability standpoint. Now, what about the softness of the hay? We certainly want a hay that is nice and soft, nice and malleable and bends and moves freely and it's not really coarse and hard on your hands. That's what we know drives palatability and the animal enjoys. But even with that, because that is driven by the moisture content of the hay, can be and is variable. At the end of the day, we want a hay that's soft and doesn't cause pain or discomfort in our hands, but that can be a varying moisture contents and varying what we call coarseness. Now, the maturity of the hay also will affect that. As hay matures, the stem grows longer. It's trying to make that seed head. That's what it's trying to do in life. We get a little bit less leaf, leaf content. So with a more mature hay, it's not uncommon for you to see a little bit more stem. However, still, if we've got a nice green hay, it's fairly soft, uh, fairly soft and has a good aroma to it, a little more stemmy hay, a little more hay with a little more brown leaf is not certainly at all a negative thing from a nutritional standpoint, and most of the time not negatively gonna affect the animal's palatability with that hay as well. All of that diversity is what drives us back to what we talked about earlier. We wanna feed a variety. We wanna feed a mixture of orchard grass and Timothy hay and a botanical and oat hay, and even an occasional treat of alfalfa hay. Because by feeding that diversity of different hays that have different tastes and different textures, we're decreasing the sensitivity these animals are gonna have when the natural variation that mother nature provides us occurs. So feed a variety, mix hays together, buy the largest containers of hay or the largest volumes of hay you can at one time so we see less variability, we see less change, and therefore we see less likelihood that the owner is gonna, or the animal for some reason, is gonna choose not to like it.